Oh, brother. Smash the like button, boys and girls. We got Delightful Gecko, EW, Andrew, William Fisher, Scott O2O, Winner's Point of View, Muddy Water, my dog. Welcome to the show, boys and girls. Smash the like button. Happy Wednesday. It is the best day of the week. I missed all your beautiful faces and all you beautiful people. It's going to be a good one. Sit back, relax. Let's enjoy it. Work on three, work on me. One, two, three, work. I like that. I like it. Mm, good hit. Technique sound, baby. Technique sound. Go, 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 go. Go, DJ. Get it out. Hey. Hey, Greg, too far off. Tighten it down. Two more yards right there. You did it. Now pick it. Physical, physical, physical. Don't go on your heels. Stay shoulders over the toes. Feel it, feel it, feel it, Jay. Read the cue, read the cue. Compete, E. Square, square. Way to stay on top, too. Pick, pick. Hey, go red. <laughs> hey, that was close. That's going to be a pick six. Good evening, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to another episode of High Top Sports. It is, in fact, the best day of the week. And I'm not quite sure if you guys were trying to understand what Will Harris was trying to say there. But basically said in so many words that we're back. All right, it's going to be a good show, boy, do a good show, boys and girls. We got Mr. Stephen Harris coming on later today. But before we dive into that, let me go ahead and introduce the co-host for the evening, Mr. David Solder. Quiz, everybody. What's going on, big dog? How are you, man? Oh, man, you know, doing, doing really good. I mean, you know what? I left work earlier today, and I decided to drink some water before I got out instead of Tito. So I'm doing oh, my good. gosh, Dave. We're not even 30 seconds in, bro. Golly, you're killing me. I got to put a muzzle on your ass. <laughs> Just pipe down for for 10 seconds. All right. And <laughs> we're going to go ahead. We've got a, we, we've got to go in store. We've got Mr. Cam Parker joining us today with the incredible flow, the incredible mustache to talk all things. What's that? What can I say? My mom loves it. You know, this, this is all for my mom right here. I get my college degree. I don't have to cut my hair anymore. It's all good. I love it. I'm, I'm all for it. So we're going to talk all things spring practice, man. We had you on after the first one. We were going 12-0. and 0. Again, back to the question I had you before. Are we back, Cam? Oh, well, I heard some buzz about statues being built. Mm. And uh, as I said to you guys, uh, some concrete being purchased at mm. one of the hardware stores in Gainesville. Uh, some caution tape around campus, you know, they're, they're getting those foundations ready. Uh, so well, time will tell, you know, I, I love it. I heard, I heard the same thing. <laughs> yeah. A I little how, birdie. Told I love how Cam feeds feet. He just pumps the ego. He pumps the fuel back into the, the veins and I love it. You know what I mean? It doesn't keep yeah. us exact comes on here. It kind of keeps it even keel. You know, he's like, yeah, you know, we're feeling pretty good about it. Cam, Cam gives us the answer. We all want to hear, which I love. All right, man. So look, hey, we, you- go ahead. I said yin and, yin and yang right there with me and Zach, you know. We we got to have two sides of every sword, you know. That's true, and it's good. It's good for me. I don't need to be pumped up every single day, you know, so it's good to get a nice little dosy dough on him. Let me talk to us. Oops. Talk to us, Cam. Let's, let's, let me get your thoughts and, you know, opinions. Since day one, we're in practice six was today. We've got you let us know just a minute ago. We've got our first scrimmage on Saturday, which is exciting. Obviously, you guys are going to be chomping at the bits to get as much information from that as you can. But what what are some big changes you've seen just – in six practices, obviously you had a, a lot of great takeaways after the first one, but now that's what we talked about before, the bus has worn off a little bit. The, the the honeymoon stage has gone away. What are we looking at? Well, I think you're starting to see, it again, kind of through, I mean, almost halfway through the practices now. Um, it can feel very repetitive. I know some people get annoyed with some of the clips that we put out that's the same stuff, so that's really all we get to see. Um, but you're starting to see kind of, who you're expecting the contributors to be not really depth chart wise, but some of the guys who are standing out, what positions different guys will be playing. Okay. Um, you kind of see that with the offensive line and the defensive backs, especially uh, who's lining up at what spot um, who's working at least at that spot in spring and going into fall camp where they'll be. So you're starting to get a hang of everything going forward. Um, you know, we'll, we'll learn more in the scrimmage about specifics. Um, you know, maybe okay. a first team type of thing, you know, the one thing with Billy Napier is he's never been uh, one to quickly put out a depth chart, you know, so we, sure. we just don't know everything like that so far, but we're starting to get a hang of who's playing where, who's going to be the, the main guys going forward. And, you know, it's a lot to be excited about still, even though it feel kind of repetitive with some of those practices, it's still a lot to be excited about going forward. 
I know there's been some noise about Kelby Collins moving into that D- interior D line. We heard about it early on, but now it seems to come out and it's official that he is making that move from that edge yeah. jack position more to the interior D line. But from what I read, he seems excited about it. It seems to be better suited. Is that what you're seeing as well? Yeah, it's weird because we haven't gotten to see really the one on one drill just yet. They just started doing that this week, and then we went through one practice, and now he's in a black non contact jersey. So okay. nothing major there um he's participating with the group but didn't do any contact drills so we'll keep an eye on that uh see how he does tomorrow because there's another practice tomorrow and then the first scrimmage on saturday so he'll be one to keep an eye on um but i know that he's excited about it i mean it's i don't think it was a you know a gradual move i think it was kind of sudden Um, i don't i know i wasn't really expecting it everyone wasn't really expecting it because of how good of a year he had on the edge sure um but Move that they feel strongly about and that he can be versatile in that spot um he won't be playing no stack or anything like that it'll be that 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 defensive end what they call it. it'll be the, the three tech um but i think that he could have a very effective year there too i mean we saw what he could do on the edge this is just another way to get him on the field get him some experience and from what he indicated when he spoke on saturday um he spoke to the press that this was a long-term move that this was something where for the future, it looks like that he's going to be on the interior defensive line. He's done playing on the outside. So, you know, this isn't just a short-term fix to fill a spot. This is a – the staff feels more comfortable with him on the inside than they do on the outside. So we'll, we'll keep an eye on that going forward, but I think it could be a good move for him. Um, they certainly need a lot of help on the interior defensive line. They struggled getting pressure there last year. You move a guy over with a lot to prove who was very effective last year in a limited role. So – who knows? I, th- I think this is a good move, and I think it could work out for them. I love it. I mean, that li- that D line now looks like it could be a combination of Banks, Kelby Collins, Slackman, and Jackson. And there's a lot of experience yeah. there. And then obviously, LG McCray is going to make some play some factors. Dave mentioned before the show they've got him slide out of that F position now. So kind of like that three tech, right? That edge position, uh, not necessarily yeah. that Jack. That TJ Searcy seems to have taken the reins. But again, Boone still in a non contact jersey from what I read. Uh, alongside yeah. Pyburn. Yeah, so Pyburn has not been participating with the group. He's been doing his rehab stuff, um, which the fact that he's even doing rehab stuff and is dressing out is a miracle in itself, considering he's, he tore his ACL in the Arkansas game. Yeah. So you're talking about maybe four or five months, almost six months removed from that, and he's already running around on the field. He's already doing his thing. He just – because it's spring, you don't want to risk anything. They're obviously going to take it slow. Um, same thing with Justice Boone, although he's a little farther ahead in his recovery because his injury was earlier than Pyburn's. Um, but the same thing, too, there's no need to force the issue with spring. Get your guys healthy, get them gradually moved, get their strength back up, and then when fall camp rolls around, you get them rolling. I love it. Dave, what you got for him? Yeah, I was just going to go over a few notes from the uh, practices that we got from Gaines Vegas over there on the Florida Victorious Boards. And if you haven't joined the Florida Victorious Boards, you can join. <laughs> With promo code HITOP, you'll save 20% on your first month's membership, and you'll get notes like this. Uh, I'm only going to give away a few because it is a paid thing that you're going to have to do for Florida Victoria. So I will just give away a few notes here. He says, Montreal Johnson had an outside run, and he cut up the field for a long play, then busted two big runs right up the middle. Jaden Boss broke a big run right up the middle. Kanan Daniels caught a couple of short passes and got big gains from both places. Some really good, uh, looks like running backs are starting to find the rhythm. And, you know, we, we talk about, like, the running backs catching passes in the backfield, adding that to the offense. It's good to see that Kanan Daniels is kind of, you know, catching some footballs there as well in practice. And he got Juquavian Frazier is a guy that has a lot of experience. Uh, he's got some notes here. Caught a really tough sideline pass, drawing praises from the teammates. Noticed T.J. Abrams for the first time that he had a really nice catch about 10 yards deep and turn it up quick for a big play on the sideline. Eugene Wilson continues to be the best receiver out there. Obviously, I, I'm pretty sure nobody would argue with that. And I'll pass on one more to you folks. Devin Moore had a great practice, had an interception. I don't know who. It doesn't say from who. Second big practice I've seen from him this spring. I saw a couple of the freshmen make plays. Teddy Foster made a couple of breaks on the ball and had a couple of pass breakups. Jameer Grimsley also had a couple of cat pass breakups there too. So if you guys want to get the rest of these notes, join Florida Victorious, join the boards, high top. You save 20% on your first month's membership with that promo code. And, uh, yeah, we got some other Florida Victoria stuff that we got to mention earlier on or later on, excuse me, in the show. Jack Miller threw that pass is what I heard. <clears throat> Anyways, uh, <laughs> so, look, 
A lot of hype from DJ Lagway is too. We've seen more practices. You've seen him throw the ball more. It does appear like I pick up on when you guys tweet out, hey, so-and-so throw to, threw to so-and-so. Like you said, that kind of alludes to the depth chart in a way. Like it's not your obviously locked and loaded, but if you've got DJ throwing to Jaquavion Frazier's, you know, okay, I know where Jaquavion's going to be on the depth chart, right? So what are we seeing with that wide receiver room a little bit? I know Andy Jeans had a non-contact jersey, pulled a little hammy in one of the practices, but I want to hear about Mizell, and then I will also just, again, how, what's the progress on, on DJ so far? Well, starting with um, Andy Jean, I, I would assume that it's a non-major you know, injury. He's been doing some rehab work uh, in the indoor facility while we've been there. Um, and again, Billy talked about it on, I think it was again on Saturday when he announced uh, Miles Graham and Cam Waits were going to be out, that those were the two major injuries. Um, so outside of that, I don't think that there's really anything too, too concerning. But again, it's spring. There's no need to rush anyone back if they're not ready. Get them healthy, get their strength back up and go. I've been really impressed with Aiden Mizell. Um, again, you know, this country was founded on speed and space. You know how it is. So, you know. <laughs> But he has a big ability to stretch the field vertically, which they just didn't have last year. Um, and part of that, too, was Aiden Mizell. He had an injury his senior year of high school, and he was a little bit undersized last year. And he was able to get a bunch of weight bolt back up this year while retaining the speed and the ability to stretch the field vertically. So I, I like what he brings to the table, and Florida needs that deep threat. You have your guys that can catch the short routes and get 5'10", sometimes even 15 yards in Eugene Wilson. And now with the freshman as well, you have a guy who can make, you know, your spectacular sideline catches in Khalil Jackson, but they need a blazer to get down the field so that Graham Mertz can just unload it and you can get a big play when you need it. And that guy can be Aiden Mizell, um, you know, verified track speed. I mean, his parents were track stars at UF. That doesn't tell you all you need to know about this kid's speed. He is inherently got speed. Um, and he's the fact that he's bulked up and he's turning heads at camp right now between the players and the teammates, I think that he could be a real weapon for Florida this year. As far as the depth chart, I don't know. Sure. You know, the receiver part is really weird in the fact that you could have six starting caliber receivers. Really only three are going to see the field at the time if they're lucky, but all six are going to play. Sure. You know, that just the rotation of how that position works where you may be a starter, but your backup is going to have more playing time than you. That's just the way it works at receiver. And I think Aiden Mizell, um, I don't know if he'll be a, a starter or not, but he's going to see the field this year. And I, I hope that they're able to stretch the ball down the field this year because they certainly need it. No, I love that. And look, I think starter or whatever depth chart, like you said, that in wide receiver room doesn't matter. I think we saw that last year. Uh, Khalil Jackson at one point wasn't the starter on the list. And obviously he took a lot. He got a lot of playing time. He's expected to have a big breakout year as well. So excited to see what all those guys are, are able to do. Cam Waits, you said serious injury. I didn't hear about that because he was, he tore his Achilles so, last year. Or is that still recovering? So it, it's, it, it's an injury where it's at least going to keep him out of um, spring, it looks like. Um, it was a – let me pull it up because I, I had it earlier today. And then I think it was a – it was another calf injury. Um, oh, wonderful. It was a, a strained calf and a soft tissue issue is what Billy Napier said on Saturday. Um so, again, now you're looking at a spot at left tackle, too, where he was stepping in for Austin Barber, who's now out with an injury. So now you're down two left tackles. Thankfully, they don't have a game on Saturday. I think that's what you take away from that is that, thank God, it's only spring. And it's not fall camp or it's not in the middle of the season because now you're down two left tackles. That being said, I know that they feel really strongly about the depth this year. It's something that almost every assistant coach and – Everyone on the offensive line, the defensive line who's spoken to us has talked about is the fact that they have more depth than they've had the last two years. Um, and I know that they feel confident that they could have a guy step into that role. Uh, Brandon Crenshaw Dixon is at right tackle, it looks like. Mm -hmm. um, so that tackle spot, um, you're looking at, you know, some other guys, and even some of the freshmen too. Fletcher Westfall has been working kind of over there too. Maybe he could step in uh, for now. Um I forget who the other ones were off the top of my head, but you know, there's, there's plenty of opportunity for guys to make an impact right now in spring with those injuries, step in and continue to build confidence with the coaching staff that if someone does, if someone does go down in the fall, they have a guy who could step right back up with little drop off. Cause you saw that the last two years with guys having injuries, the drop off was massive from starter to backup. So 
I don't think that they really feel like they have that this year. I feel like that they feel uh, really strongly about the depth and that, hey, it's next man up and we'll be just fine. That's where, so obviously I'm always hyped up and I always get this Disney Gator persona uh, thrown on me. But what excites me is I feel like this year on paper, because that's all we can really work with and what we get from you guys. But on paper, the offensive line, in my opinion, feels much better than it did last year. Two years ago when it was at its best, since the Billy Napier era was also great. There was a ton of experience. Three of those guys went to the NFL, one of them being Michael Tarquin, who transferred to uh, USC. So that line that had a lot of ex- had a lot of experience, and then you add uh, Osiris in, right? That was that first year that they came in. So we saw what that line was able to do. Then last year, we had, you know, just kind of a, a mix mac patty whack type of line where you've got Damian George playing the wrong position. You got Mike Mozuka coming in trying to fit in the center. Kingsley's supposed to be the guy. Jake has to make a step up. He has a phenomenal year, but think about just the the unit, the, the, the line being synced up. Austin Barber, he's playing that, a, a new position, dealing with an injury all year. Then you go to the depth. Cameron Waits is out, right? I mean, Najee Harris is a true freshman. I mean, it is very, very thin. You know, when you look at it from that perspective, you kind of think, well, Maybe, you know, we're, we're, we have Rob sell a lot of crap on this show and that whole offensive line crew. But when you kind of look at the pieces, like, I mean, this guy was working with damn near nothing and kind of Houdini'd himself through that. And we've also criticized him on his recruiting a little bit, and we've criticized him because the quality on paper isn't there. We don't know, mm-hmm. though, what it's going to turn into the football field, but now I'm looking at it this year. We're about to see, right? Najee Harris is going to take a step up. Big Rod's supposed to make a step up. He was also a true freshman last year. Uh, Christian Williams, been hearing a lot about him. The guy's kid's huge. Fletcher Westfall. This line, all of a sudden, that was we were highly criticizing. We're going to see what the recruits are going to be able to do. And obviously, the two additions from the portal. I'm extremely excited on paper for what this line's looking like heading into next year. And, and the nice thing, too, is that because of the depth, because of the transfer additions, and now some of the guys from last year, like Caden Jones, for example, is a guy that I've also been kind of watching too. Great one. He's been working in the right tackle spot uh, behind Crenshaw and Dixon. Because of that, they don't have to throw those true freshmen in the fire. You know, they don't have to throw Fletcher uh, Westfall up against an all SEC defensive end uh, and say, hey, good luck. You know, they don't have to do that. They can let these guys develop a little bit because now they have veteran experience in front of them, not just as the five across, but in the two deep. And that's something that they just haven't had since Billy Napier's first year. And again, I remember after his first year, even with Anthony Richardson declaring for the NFL draft, your thought was, okay, well, the offensive line is still pretty good. They can work around that. They all hightail it out of there. Now they're all at new schools. And Florida kind of has to plug in pieces just to get an offensive line together. And it showed last year. They they struggled mightily because they just didn't have guys in the right spot. They didn't have enough of the guys. But now, again, you don't really know if it's going to be as good as it was because I can tell you right now, there was no better offensive lineman than Osiris Storis. There probably won't be one for a little bit. Um, but they feel really strongly about the depth and the fact that they have bodies and bodies that can play, and that's something that they haven't had in two years. I'm excited for Fletcher, too, because like you said, Najee kind of had to be thrown into the fire last year. It was, it yeah. wasn't, he wasn't playing. I mean, I think he played because he was good. But he also had to play because he had to, right? Which is yeah. is fine, but you don't. The trenches take a lot, especially he was a three star recruit. Don't forget, it wasn't like he was this five star number one offensive lineman who are expected to be right away. He probably played a lot more than most five star offensive linemen uh, yeah. did last year, and and was effective clearly because look at the massive a uh, climb he made last year. I I've said when he was coming out, I said, look, I think his size is the reason for his low stars because his technique and his. His drive and how he utilizes his weight just from watching the film, I think is phenomenal. I think they obviously see that headed into this year. I forgot about Caden Jones. He was a four-star guy. Just think about that. And so was Big yeah. Rod. And the big thing with him too, Caden Jones, he wasn't a spring enrollee. He was a summer fall enrollee. And right when he got on campus, he broke his foot. But he missed most of the year. So I know that he spent the whole year recovering. But again, that's kind of a guy who fell through the cracks of, you know, hey, Florida does have a body at tackle. He just hasn't been able to play. But now he can. He's healthy. He's good to go. Um, and he's a big dude, too. I mean, he is absolutely massive. And that's something that Florida has as big offensive linemen. Even Najee Harris, I know he's a little smaller. I think he's the smallest scholarship offensive lineman in terms of height. But he's going to be playing guard. So, it, And he's still 6'3". Yeah. Like, he's not. He's <laughs> let's, not, let's, he's not let's, we're saying 11. small lightly here, guys. 
he's still 6'3", 323, so he's fine, and he proved that he could be effective last year. This is a guy who, again, was thrown into the fire, had to play both guard spots and learn center, and he held his own up there in, in that role. Imagine what he's going to be like as a full-time starter now without the pressure of having to learn on the fly. I think he could be a great offensive lineman for Florida. And, again, it speaks to the depth, too, that they, they finally have it. They finally have the depth. Um, again, Dave spoke about how that there were big runs uh, in their scrimmage the other day in practice, probably because the offensive line can finally open up those holes because they just have a better group this year than they did last year. And going back to Mizell, too, uh, I know everyone was criticizing Graham Mertz last year and the offense last year for not being able to throw the ball down the field and only throwing dump-off passes and slants and things like that. It's hard to throw the ball down the field when you only have two seconds to throw it. You know, so I think that th this is a big thing, too, with Mizell coming back, gaining his weight back, and still having that speed to get down the field. Well, now you have an offensive line to complement that, block a little bit longer so that Graham Mertz can unload it, so that DJ Lagway in certain packages can air it out. Because we both know that they have the accuracy and the ability to do it, but now it kind of feels like that they will have the time to do it as well. I love it. Before we go, Cam, you got anything for him, Dave? Yeah, I was going to say, man, uh, I, I like the fact that now the offensive line, we've got more depth. I mean, losing Osiris Torrance obviously was a, a, a big piece to losing the offensive line. But I think now with the more of the depth and the more of the experience that we got, I think now the offensive line as a cohesive unit will play a lot better. And these guys have obviously communicated and everything else. I mean, last year, Graham Mertz was sacked 28 times per PFF. Yeah. He was pressured 120 times in drop back pass situations. So, I know a lot of people out there will say, well, Graham Mercer doesn't throw the ball deep. And, you know, as you as you just said, Cam, he doesn't have time to throw the ball deep. <laughs> so, I mean, yeah. with this and this shuffling around, and, and even you don't even know who they're going to add in the spring portal period. They they may add a body or two. I mean, with, with the way that it is, it's got to get better. And, and look, you look at Montreal Johnson. He has multiple 800-yard seasons, like double 800-yard yeah. seasons. Imagine what he could do behind an offensive line that it can just create him some more space and some more holes. I mean, this guy could rush a thousand yards. Yeah, and, and I mentioned this in a Twitter space last night, too, because we it's talked about way that it is. what that means with Montreal Johnson and, and the running back room. is. I think people forget how effective Montreal Johnson can be because Trevor Etienne was your home run hitter. Montreal Johnson was your guy who will get you your four, five, six yards of play. Etienne was the one that could get you 60 yards on first and 10. But Montreal Johnson, when he has the holes in the offensive line to complement them, to compliment him, he could be a great running back. Again, back-to-back 800-yard -back seasons while splitting carries with a really good running back against a good offensive line in year one and a bad offensive line in year two. It, it, it He could be really effective, and I think it says a lot, too, now that Florida also has receiving backs with KD Daniels and Jaden Baugh. They could open that up, too. You know, just the, the work that they put with getting these transfer additions in and the recruiting class that they did, I know it's not great on paper with five stars, but the fact that they have bodies that can play, it opens up so much more for this offense. And, you know, I, I'm excited to see what they do in a real game-like setting. Again, only take away so much from on-air drills for 15 minutes in practice, but on paper, it looks good. It looks a lot better than it did last year. And also, too, Montreux doesn't have a record. But that's that's all I have to say about that. Um, dude, I, hey, that was... That wasn't that wasn't me, Dave. Dave worth that. Hey, so oh, sorry, I love for, it. Yeah, love that was that was my bad. That's I I I couldn't hold it back anymore. Um, right, Cam, tell them where they can find you on Twitter, man. You're constantly posting out clips. Much appreciated. Again, you get 15 minutes of love, but we appreciate what you're able to produce in that time. And always appreciate you coming on here, man, and and being able to chat it up with us, especially with that glorious hair. You were called Minshew an 80s porn star. I don't know if you saw in the comments. What? <laughs> A little jealous I'm, over here. I'm sure my mom will love that. I think she's watching right now, so I know that this <laughs> will. She'll really love those comments. So I appreciate it. Um, Shout out to Mama Parker. Five um, again. Practice tomorrow. Let me double check the time. I know it's sometime in the morning. Um, they haven't released the time for the scrimmage yet on Saturday, but I assume that's going to be sometime in the morning as well. Um. Let me find the email real quick. I believe it's at around 1130, but let me find it. Uh, also, too, it's Camp Parker 25, right? I don't think, I think I cut you off when you were saying it. 
Yeah, Cam Parker twenty five on Twitter. Actually, um, Thursday. So tomorrow, uh, the practice period begins at four fifty. Um, they've been running a little late for the last few okay. times, so hopefully five o'clock will be out on the field. Um, and clips will be on Twitter, and then around six forty five is going to be the press conference. So I believe Jabbar Jaluk. Uh, this will be the first time that he gets to speak. Um, I assume that a running back is going to get to speak too, just because they usually try to match it up with the position coach that's speaking. Um, Montrell would probably be the one I'd bet on. Um, maybe Trayon Webb. They don't let freshmen speak, so Trayon Webb probably getting to speak to uh, if he gets to go. That'll be interesting because that'll be the first time he gets to speak to the media. Um, but Jabar Jaluk at around 645. Um, hopefully some quotes will be on Twitter, some stories out from everyone. Um, and then 450 for the viewing period, hopefully around 5 o'clock, uh, there'll be some clips from practice up. Saturday, uh, it's the first scrimmage. They haven't announced the time yet, but I'm going to assume that it's sometime in the morning because that's usually when they've done it. I love it. Cam, pleasure as always. Again, shout out to Mama Parker. She is watching. We love your son. Mustache, hair, and all. Appreciate it, man. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks, Cam. Go Gators, man. All right, boys and girls, that was Cam Parker there. Uh, be sure to give him a follow at Cam Parker 25 on Twitter. We're going to have Mr. Steven Harris hop on in just a moment because we had him on week one as well, and we broke down some of the tape from the defensive line. That's obviously an exciting piece, and it's cool to be able to watch these clips and get a different perspective on it, I think, than we as fans do. Uh, before we do, though, before we, let's, 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 let's talk about ETN because I know you're chomping at the bits here. I know you're, uh, I think, oh, honestly, uh, Dave, I think this is your fault. And here's. Wait, hold here's on. You, you, is, is that liquor behind you? Shady Mile. You might, you, you might want to hide that while, while talking about him. Shady Mile bourbon. I think it's your fault. How's my fault? Your tweets, bro. What are we drinking tonight? And he just felt, he felt encouraged. Hey, <laughs> he maybe, felt, it was. maybe it was. Maybe it was. I, I mean. He doesn't follow me anymore because he's part of Georgia, so maybe he does. Yeah, he um so look, what is interesting is I spoke about it on Sunday when it happened, we found out about it, and I I said what was gonna happen, that Kirby would come out and basically say, Yeah, we're gonna handle it internally. <clears throat> it was very interesting, and I knew when I talked about it that it was going to be a touchy subject because look, a DUI is very like it's serious. It's I, I said it on the show, it's not looked at as seriously anymore, but what people, you know, sometimes forget, and people are in the comment section, a DUI could turn into something very serious. Where you kill somebody, you, you know, you you affect somebody else's life, and so there is people that do not take it lightly at all. And I knew that was going to happen. So you, this, I mean, we're, we're, this thing is right in the middle here. Um, and so I was actually talking to you know, buddy, about about it today because we were trying to figure out like, like, you know, how what's the severity of this? I don't know exactly what he blew. I bl I believe he refused to blow, so we don't know what. I don't think there's an actual number behind it. Um, regardless, he's underage, but I, I genuinely don't think anything is is going to happen. I don't. I, I, they're talking about suspensions. Obviously, he's not going to be kicked off the team, which I didn't think should happen, anyways. Maybe a game or two, but I, I like I said, I think what's going to happen is he'll sit out the spring game, and then we'll forget about it and move on. That's what I think is going to happen. Yeah, suspended for the spring game. That's really going to do something. Uh, yeah, I mean, if he is if he's suspended. I would assume maybe the first game of the season, but maybe that's it. But they are playing Clemson, so they may let him play. If it was like a nobody like Ball State or something, they'd probably suspend him. Um, you know, yeah, it, DUI is pretty serious. I mean, the only reason you can joke about it is because nothing happened and like to anybody, nothing serious, nobody got hurt or anything sure. like that. It's pretty, it's a pretty common you know it, crime that people do everywhere. I mean, it's not okay, and it doesn't make it okay because I've never had one because I've always had a ride whenever I've been drinking. But I mean. When you look at it and, and, and what happened, I mean, in, in the state of Georgia, there is a zero tolerance rule, too. So even if they do have alcohol on your breath in Georgia, they can still take you to jail. But usually they don't if you blow under the, 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 the legal limit. But since you're underage, you blow anything or you have any kind of alcohol on you, they're going to take you straight to jail anyway. And uh, just the legal stuff that he's going to have to deal with and the repercussions from the media and stuff like that. It's punishment enough, I guess. But at the same time, I mean, we don't know how they're going to handle it in-house. I'm pretty sure Kirby just lets him play anyway because he just wants to win. But uh, I'm, I'm renaming. I'm gonna rename him to Tito's ETN. I, no. I love the name. Uh, I do, I do love love the nickname. Q Lee said they didn't do anything to Jalen Carter. What do you expect? But again, Jalen the Jalen Carter situation was technically he was off. Yeah. I mean, he was off the team. Yeah, he was, yeah, he's going to the NFL. <clears throat> yeah, the, so, uh, the NFL 
to have done something at that point. And I look, I think they can kind of get away with not doing anything because of that. Uh, real quick, I don't know where Stephen Harris. Oh wait, oh he's waiting on me. Oh, I don't see you. Hold on. Oh, Stephen Harris is waiting on you. Well, uh, you know, I'll go into another story of uh, you know, more of the DUI troubles that they have over there at Georgia. I mean, you know, we can talk about like uh, you know, never mind. I'll, I'll keep it. I'll cut it. I do want to do this real quick while we wait on Mr. Stephen Harris here. My my boy, Mr. Ricky Husey, had his baby on Monday. We had a long day Monday. Why I didn't do a show on Monday? Mr. Asher Martin Husey there. Just an absolute yeah. stud. We got another another boy in the group here, boys and girls. Dad's all around. Pump for my boy. Uh, we didn't know what it was going to be. We waited. He waited just like us. And uh, it was electric when he came in the room and told us he was having a boy. We got a video of it. So shout out to Ricky and Miss Liz for Class uh, of- their beautiful child. What's that? Class of 2042, five star. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. All right, I'm going to send Stephen Harris a new link. I think maybe my link's bad. And yeah, you had a bad link that one time. But, yeah, I mean, like, it's overall, if you want to make jokes about it, that's fine because nothing really happened. But if something serious had happened, then, like, yeah, that's, that's nothing to joke about. But, like, at, at the end of the day, um, you know, after everything that he said on that one show and kind of, like, this in Florida, you got to expect something to be said to you on the Internet from everybody else. And, and the fact that, that Georgia's had these traffic violations and DUIs going on since last year, and it seems like they've done nothing about it and they don't even care. So it's like, you know, I, I've heard from people that attend Athens and have been down there in Georgia that, like, the police are very strict down there. Like, if you're walking with an open container outside, they'll give you an open container ticket. <laughs> like, they don't play around there. And so, like, it, it's, it's, it's just wild. Like, it, it's like you go to Athens, you're going to get in trouble for something, seems like. Absolutely. Let's do this. Let's, let's cover some recruiting stuff while we on Stephen Harris. So, two big things. Vernell Brown, the big-time wide receiver, obviously his dad, coached with Billy, yep. then left to go be Anthony Richardson's agent. Visited this week and is set to visit again for another practice. And I like, I love this. I'm going to keep beating this drum. And we've got another big time visit coming up from wide receiver side. Like, wide receivers should be a big target this year with DJ Lagway. Get Billy Gonzalez that has a history, a track record of recruiting, you know, and putting studs into the NFL. So, again, I understand maybe the offense the first two years wasn't that electric, but I think Graham Mertz, you know, kind of showed that it, it does have some potential to pop. And, I think DJ Lagway is going to, going to excite a lot of people. So that Vernell Brown one is going to be an interesting to watch. Although he did get crystal ball to Ohio State, people got rowdy about it. Not too not too worried about it now. Um, and then we've got Dallas Wilson, four star, top five wide receiver, maybe a five star. C- currently committed to Oregon, um, is set to make an official visit. He is a Florida boy. Oregon has recruited their ass off. We obviously have our high top Oregon show, so I'm familiar with Oregon and what they're doing. This would be a massive flip. I mean, you're going up against uh dan landing and out there in oregon and they're doing a phenomenal job in that phil knight money but again you've got so much florida talent that has flood just fleeing the state right now we got to get a buck on this thing got to lock it in and yeah. see we're able to close so anything on those two guys i mean Vernell obviously hasn't said an official visit but i do i did read that he's kind of getting the treatment the red card treatment from a lot of people billy both billy's and other people that staff yeah, I mean, it's still early in the cycle. Of, of course, if, even if kids commit early right now, I, I like I still don't really get too excited or even the, with the crystal balls or anything. But like, I mean, you, you go around and you look at some of the recruits, especially the wide receivers they've they've talked about. And I, I, I remember reading from one. I can't remember the name of, of, of who I was reading about, but they also talk about DJ Lagway and the potential of him being the future quarterback at Florida. And that's what's getting a lot of these wide receivers that that, that want to come to Florida. And I think, you know, obviously that helps Billy, Billy Gonzalez out because it doesn't mean that he has to recruit less. He just has something he can pitch to these recruits. Now, um, I think still, you know, a lot of these recruits are waiting to see what Billy Napier does this year as well. You're going to need to at least show some improvement and obviously keep your job because a lot of those other schools are saying, oh, Billy Napier ain't going to be here past year three. Look at the schedule, all that other kind of stuff. But, I mean, it, it's one of those kind of things where you just measure it out and and, and you, you, you kind of, it, it's negative recruiting. You're just going to get that anywhere that you go in any school. But at the same time, you can always pitch DJ Lagway, and it makes them feel a lot better, especially the offensive side of the ball. Totally agree. And somebody, I can see Stephen Harris. He's cheesing me out. Somebody asked about the decommitment wide receiver. There's a wide receiver that's committed to Ohio State. He decommitted. Apparently, he's looking at Florida. We're going to talk about a few decommitments and then other commitments that happened to USC uh, here in a moment. So we'll save that. But let's let's dive into this. Let's, like, this man, I love it. <laughs> 
Yo. <laughs> What's going on, boss? Can you even hear me? Hey, hey, yeah, hey. yeah, I can hear you. Okay. Hey, were you wearing, were you wearing that the title game? Say yeah, nothing. this is actually straight off the field. There you go. <laughs> yeah, oh, no shit. It still got some Ohio State Buckeye scars on it. <laughs> I love it. Yeah, look, I don't know if you can see, but you, oh, you see that gray right there? Hold on, which way I go? Oh, oh, there you go. Is that yeah, a, yeah, 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 yeah. You see that gray scar right there? You is that the gray? Is that from uh, the quarter? Unbelievable. Yeah, huh? It's yeah, probably from one of from from one of them linemen. <laughs> I love it. I absolutely love it. All right, let me get Mr. Stephen Harrison here, man, real quick. Actually. Dave, I'm gonna I'm gonna keep you out, kick you yeah. out real fast, and have Steven watch this, and then we'll bring you back, yeah. right? Yeah, I get yeah, hyped up. You said we talking football, I had to bring the helmet. No, I love it. Ready to rock and roll, <laughs> man. All right, so look, we were talking. We had you on after the first week of practice, and I loved getting your insight. A lot of people enjoyed <clears throat> your takes and just watching. Look, we get thirty seconds, yeah. but just getting your perspective. Somebody who's played the game, coached the game, of how the practice was ran. Gerald Chapman is getting a ton of love. And I'm also, too, I know you want to rant about the Princely's comments. We're going to get into that, too. We're going to, I'm going to keep you around for that because I know it's going to be fun. But watching, so I got a couple questions. I couldn't find a lot. But these exercises right here where the guys are holding mm -hmm. their legs, talk to me about them. Mm -hmm. What are they trying to accomplish here? And what's, what's the focus on these workouts? Uh, uh, hip explosion. Um, coming out of your hips uh, fast and uh, okay. getting your hands on the target. Um, most of the time, uh, and down in the trenches, uh, you don't want to be taking a big step, uh, when you, when you're coming out of your hips, uh, cause that allows, uh, anytime you move your feet out of the ground, you lose power. Okay. So you want to take a quick step and come out of your hips. So you want to be explosion out of, out of your hips. Your hips should be the first thing moving. Um, once the ball snap, um, before your feet even move, you, you should be making, uh, forward progress with your hips to penetrate the line. So here they just coming out the hips hard. Uh, hitting the the bag with their hands, getting their hands on the would be uh offensive alignment and uh, keeping pressure on them. And he had them hitting it at the bottom because that's kind of like where your eye level would be when you're coming out coming out of your hips. So you're in, training in that muscle life. then, under making sure that right. you get that muscle to yeah. where you don't even have to Fine. think about it. Like I was saying last year, I didn't think we were coming out of our hips enough. Mm. This this is this that's is what you elite uh, hip thrust. Yeah. And now I, I don't. For some reason, I kind of cut the clip off. But Big Des here, we kind of mm -hmm. talked about it. He's not looking like four thirty, Steve. No, you, he's not. You've been Listen, around a bunch I of people. You, you know what four thirty looks people. like. I try to tell people, man, it's not what you think, man. And uh, muscle weighs more than fat. Um, and if he put on a little bit of fat <clears> with some more muscle, uh, which is possible, then of course his weight to go up. But um, they haven't been running around in pads and stuff like that. The, the training is has been different. So um, if he's gaining strength, he's not going to be necessarily losing weight um, like that. But on the field, he's going to shed some pounds running around out here. I can see uh, he's been um, intentional about uh, every movement that he's doing um, and, and trying to stay low and hitting the pad and, and, and uh, giving uh, maximum effort. So he's going to lose some weight just uh, doing that alone, um, that much attention to detail to what they're doing. And Coach Chapman uh, doing a phenomenal job uh, with the things he's showing them um, and the different movements that they're doing and why they're doing them. It's all football related and it's going to transfer to the field. Um, like Big Cam smashing that bag. Just just imagine Cam lining up over the center and when the ball twitches, he just comes out of his hips like that. Sure. Huge now difference. We watched, them, we watched them play. Yeah, we watched them play last year. And they and had moments where we had big plays, but it wasn't consistently smashing. Uh, like I say, as a as a big guy, we don't hit anything; we smash everything. And so that movement, every time the ball snaps from the whole defensive line, is going to be uh, tremendous. It, it, it's going to be night and day, um, and just doing it. And just from earlier this week, I seen some of the clips, and I could tell they were kind of uncomfortable in doing some of the stuff. And they just let me know that maybe they wasn't doing it enough in the years previous. Uh, so this is going to be, uh, it's, it's going to make a big difference. The stuff that, that they're doing right now, um, I did with Coach Madison. <laughs> um, mm. um, that, that bag right there is your best friend as a defense alignment. Um, and the year, that year you guys won a national championship, right? Just, I forget. Yeah, yeah for sure. Okay. Yeah. Cool. 
I do want to read this for you. You'll love this. This is a Kelby Collins quote. Uh, he says, I like it, Collins said. It just makes me practice. They're talking about Jell Chapman and the energy that he brings to the practices. Just makes me practice harder at the end of the day. I know he's going to hold me to the standard. He's going to hold the group to the standard. And to play for him, he can't be weak. He's going to get on you. Chapman doesn't just make players redo drills or fix their technique. He calls out poor energy, bad body language, or lack Bingo. of urgency. Ooh. He's not going to let you slack. He's not going to let you be lazy. He's not going to let you play with bad technique. He is a perf- <laughs> he is a what? perfectionist. Here we go. Uh, ready go. I'm ready to go play, man. It's not like <laughs> Coach Chapman. Time me up, man. I'm ready. <laughs> so what I love about that, right, and we're going to get into this in just a moment, because I believe – People always try. They you, you say a lot with very little, and we're Man. gonna play play the clip here of Princely because look, I, even though we're probably annoyed or frustrated Ooh. with Princely's comments, it ties in. It ties there's some in truth. There probably is some statement. truth behind it, right? A little bit, and, and, yeah. and they're not just Ooh. spitballing. So when you say things like, and I could be wrong here, but when I'm hearing, hey, he's not gonna let guys slack. He's not gonna do this. He's not gonna do this. Means that the previous staff probably allowed certain things to go, uh. allowed for you know. There wasn't holding guys accountable. Maybe some of the other Ooh. guys got away with stuff. And obviously, you lose a job for a reason. And so, again, they're not going to come out and say, yeah, the last guy sucked. There's a, there's a <laughs> political way to go about it. Um, right. Now, look, we're going to play Princey's comments, and then <laughs> we're going to go. But <laughs> Man. Because <to> <laughs> <laughs> everything you said ties in to the Princey comment. Um, everything the guy just explained about uh, Coach Chapman. Um, it ties into the, the comment and how the comment is even relevant or how it's even able to come out of his mouth. Um, it all kind of goes hand in hand. Uh, so you think there's some truth, you're, you're agreeing there's some truth behind yes. it. Yeah, that's yeah. why I had to, that's why I said I had to, uh, you know, draft my post because it's better said than written because sure. people wouldn't understand what you're saying and it'll seem like you're dogging it. But in my first reaction, there is some dog to it now, but it's more so a uh, teacher than dog because he just don't know. He don't, he don't know. And he's trying to explain, he's defending himself against something. He shouldn't be defending himself against. Mm. He, he's, he's reacting out of, he's speaking to the fans and not to, but it's coming across as your dog in the university of Florida, but he shouldn't be responding to the fans because the guy asked him the question, what is he learning or what is he working on to be better? And he said, uh, run stopping a little bit. He, he said a, a little run stopping. And then he went directly into Point the uh, pass coverage and learning how to do drops as if he played defensive back. He only, he only said that because he's trying to defend himself against what the internet has been saying about him not possibly being able to stop the run or him coming, leaving the school or his draft status not being as high and this and that. So he's, well, you know you got to work on the run. Why would you say the run a little bit? Why would it then go into? Let's play the clip. Let's play the clip. <laughs> yeah, then... yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's go. Come on. Let's play the clip and then yeah. <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> run game a little bit. But I feel like here I'm getting coached harder for things like that. You know, I feel like at Florida, like the way I was coached, it was kind of like it was almost as if like they was just telling me to go out there and use my talent, if that makes sense. But here. You know, Coach Lou and Coach, um, damn, oh, Coach Lou and Coach Joyner, they really on me about the little things, you know, attacking the run. Coach Lou really goes through the progressions of the drops and the routes that are being run when I have to go into coverage. Like when I was at Florida, it was like they would just tell me, go drop to this area, and I would have to figure out everything else on my own. But here, you know, they go real into depth. I feel like I'm actually getting, you know, developed here. So, look, before I let Stephen Harris get back rowdy <laughs> again, I, <laughs> I don't, look, we probably hate, you know, I feel like Princely anytime he gets a chance, he's taking a shot at us. But look, I don't I don't think he's probably wrong in what he's saying in some of it. No. No. Right? Because there's a reason why the D line coach doesn't work for Florida anymore. Facts. There was there was clearly something there. And there was plenty of times where and look, he defended himself on Twitter because we were asking questions, what the hell are you doing? <laughs> and it kind of probably seems like, hey, like I I, I don't know what I was doing because I I, I'm being I'm I'm not being guided in the right way. And look, you you when we watched the film, we had question marks like, what is everybody doing? Right. Right. So right. I don't think he's wrong in it. Twofold no. that everyone's playing the clip of because they had like the pranks where last year where they kind of ragged on Princely for not paying attention, right? Kind of just yeah. 
carrying himself like he was the best player. So there's probably a little bit of both, if I had to guess. There is a little right. pull and tug because if you are a leader, if you're wearing the number one jersey, if you are the best player on the football field, hold yourself to a higher standard. Say, hey, right. I wh what's happening here? I and he may have, I don't know. But those that was kind of my takeaways from it. I also believe, and I was thinking about this on the way here, watching how we've had Princey on the show. I've seen his interviews. I've seen how he's kind of carried himself. I love his energy. If I had to mm -hmm. guess, based on who we know, how Billy recruits, the personalities that Billy goes after, Billy doesn't recruit Princely. I don't care how good the kid is. He doesn't fit the mold. And I'm not. this is not a shot, because here's why. Billy wouldn't recruit me either. I could be the best damn quarterback, whatever you want to play. I can promise you he wouldn't like my loud, just probably egotistical personality. It wouldn't fit his mold <laughs> To where, it, it, I, look, I, I just, not in a negative way, it's just, I've seen yeah. who he goes, likes to go after, and he likes the kind of the cool-headed guys, because another part of the reason why I believe that, and again, this is all speculation, when Trevor Etienne, when we heard he was going into the portal, there was a all-hands-on-deck to save him, to keep him back on the staff. We heard Princely was going, and it happened. We didn't hear about, it was like, it was almost like, look, we love him, great player, but... Honestly, it's it's more of a headache than it's worth. That's kind of how right. I felt, like in a sense of like, look, Princely, we love you, wishing nothing but the best. But this this is this relationship was never going to be a, a good fit, regardless. No matter how great of a player you are, you're just not going to fit in our system. Right. Uh, and, and like you said, it is twofold. It, Princely's not told. Like you said, we had new coaches. Uh, they got rid of people for a reason. I questioned a lot of uh, stuff that I saw from the defensive line. Um, all season and I don't like to never try to you know coaches coach and they they do their thing so um but to uh for Princely um he he did struggle in some areas and I would probably I would have to attribute some of that to how coachable was he at Florida because some guys come in and they just have great talent um and but it needs to be harnessed you need to know why you're doing certain things you, got, you need to know how you you're supposed to fit on run and how to come out of your hips and stuff like that and and if you don't accept that coaching or if you may some guys are a little timid i'm not trying to say uh prince is timid or anything but some guys don't know how to properly get their body in the right position on runs so where they don't necessarily go as hard on runs as they would on pass passing plays or they're rushing the passer on first downs a lot when they probably should be looking to play the run and then turn it to a pass. But just this is Princely's second leg at a different team, so he's going to receive that coaching different. Uh, he wants to go to the NFL. He heard people saying, oh, he doesn't know how to play the run like that. So he, he doesn't have a choice now going there, but to take the hard coaching and his ears are, are open to that. But um, – just from a talent uh, standpoint, he has all the tools that you need. Um, I just know that there had to be some disconnect between – I felt it when I was at the game in Tennessee between the players and the coach. Yeah. And it wasn't that they – it was like – they were like you were trying to be their friend more so. Like in, I could see it in their eyes that they just viewed you as a friend the more so than – Lack of respect than, maybe? And not like in a negative yeah, not, way. Not that, yeah, not in a negative way. Just like you thought, I felt like they felt they were on the same level, level. as the yeah, coach. Yeah, that's what I'm saying, lack of and respect. You can't, and you can't yeah. have that. Yeah. yeah, you can't have that. And that, that translates into practice when I'm trying to teach you how to uh, defend the run. And you may be tired or you may be out of position. I'm yell at, yell at you and you get an attitude. And I feel like, dang, he got an attitude with me. I can't yell at him. Well, you're not going to get him better if, if you feel like you can't do that. And I feel like, like he said, they're coaching him harder now against trying to learn how to play the run and stuff like that. Well, you've been in college already. I'm sure they've been trying to get it through to you, get it through to you. But if if you ever feel like you're on the same level as somebody, you can't learn from that person. What's interesting, too, two things. I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if he looked to the NFL and probably got a bad, not a bad grade, but not what he was expecting. So yeah. there probably was a little punch in the mouth when going to Ole Miss, right? Of like, yeah. I'm not where I should be. So kind of what you're yeah. saying of like, it's just a change of change of tone and it feels like it's different, but it's because yeah. the old one was just, you were just so used to it that you just, you weren't yeah, going to no. be able to take anything. I mean, out. we watch, 
we watched the film differently. You got the sacks and you you had plays, but how did they come? And that's what's uh, most important for NFL scouts. They're looking at the situation in which you you got those uh, stats. Should you have been doing what you were doing on first and ten at this and at, in this situation? Should you just be running up the field? Yeah, you got the sack, but what? Were you doing your assignment? Because are you just a numbers guy or are you an on-field production guy kind of thing? Yeah, right. Like, you, yeah, right. And so then when it came to third downs, when everybody knows it's passing, and those numbers not there, now you're blaming the secondary for coverage. You know what I mean? Um, but I just wish he wouldn't defend himself against the internet, and so it, it makes him seem like he's talking about Florida, yeah. um, because you defend yourself against what people were saying about you on the internet because you respond to the internet it's evident every when someone says something you tweet back i'm not saying you don't have thick skin but you tweet back and then you delete yeah. the tweets and stuff so and when you get in from a, a camera you're just responding to the fans and not not so much as as a football player dave yeah i have mixed feelings about it coming like coming across as a fan, it's like in retrospect, like when you when when you look, I guess go go back two years, right? Um, there's a lot of Mullen guys on this on this team. Most of the guys that were vocal that would get on Twitter and say stuff and complain were Dan Mullen guys. Like I I know Trevor Etienne, he he left, he went into the portal, but did you ever hear Trevor Etienne say anything on on Twitter or if he didn't disapprove of something? I didn't hear I didn't hear a damn thing. Like Montreal Johnson no. doesn't get online and, and disapprove of anything. I, I I don't know of any like Napier guy that has that, that he's recruited has went online and said anything. I think in retrospect, I think it's a good thing for me, just based on the fact that like you don't have that attitude in the locker room. I mean, like we saw a yeah. clip where like one of the players was making fun of Princely, like leaving the practices or like leaving like the the practice meetings and stuff like that to go do something. I don't know how much truth there is behind that. And I don't want to trash the kid. Look, There's um, always, but here's the thing. It's a sarcastic joke. There's always some truth <laughs> behind that. Like you don't just pull that out of your ass. Right. Well, I've it, heard it, different it, things too. So it's not necessarily pres- against him, but yeah. 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 I think he's a special talent. Like I, I'm not going to sit here and trash the guy. I, it sure. sucks that he went to Ole Miss. He has like really, really PF, good pre- PFF grades. Obviously, he struggled in places, whatever. I think if he just, like like Stephen Harris said, if he stayed offline, I mean, how many posts do I make that's going to, I know is going to irritate a rival fan on Twitter? And I hit the mute conversation button. I don't see half the tweets that they even say. And, and, and they, they're wasting their breath. They're just typing, and I don't even respond to them. I think he would have been better off just staying off social media. And and look, and if there's an issue, like if you have an issue of how you're being coached or whatever, you're, you're supposed to be the leader. You're, you're the older guy on that whole defensive line. Go to your coaches and talk to them. I don't, I don't know where like getting on Twitter or, or social media and complaining about it's going to do anything. Like, like me personally, if I have an issue with somebody, I'm just going to go up there and, and, and tell them. Like, I'm not going to behind their back say something yeah. or go on social media. And maybe he did, and maybe he just had enough of it and he transferred. We don't know the whole backstory to it, but I just like. Like I, I, I personally, like as a fan, I don't like complainers. If if you can't do your job or you don't like statistics, like I posted a statistic about um last year and it was like twenty guys. It was twenty guys that were on defense, how much yardage they gave up coverage. It was a PFF stat. Like it was the screenshot of the PFFs. And Jaden Hill came after me and he was like, Oh, I don't know why it's this like this and why it, like I I don't know either. <laughs> That's what the site says. I didn't say anything. But it's like that was a Dan Mullen guy. I had Trady DM me one time being mad. That was a Dan Mullen guy. I have never had a Billy Napier guy say anything to me or I've seen them say anything on Twitter. So I think now, I, th- I, th- I think that does better for the mentality of the locker room, even though you're losing a really, really good player. I still think it does better for the overall mentality. And we've even heard Gray Mert say that that there's more communication, there's more togetherness now. So, yeah. And so look, this, is, mean- this, this goes back to what I was saying, that these guys have the talent. And you keep saying Dan Mullen guys. Sure. The Dan Mullen guys, it's just more of a, yeah. the ego, the personality. Look, to be fair, I would have been one of the Mullen guys. My ass would be on Twitter <laughs> chomping at your ass. Like this is this is not a shot to those guys. It's just you this is this is where we talk about the culture. It, it it's changing. Billy doesn't, you know, doesn't play it. And actually, I'm gonna read once I'll let you go, Steven. I'm gonna read a little clip here from Justice Boone, which kind of speaks to that of guys buying into it. But go ahead. I just yeah to the Dan Mullen guys. Dan Mullen was there uh, for my 06 uh, team and was mm. part of the 08 team, and so he's 
used to seeing guys that have a different type of character, mm. but every coach, every coach can't relate to those guys. Mm. Um, if you're too uh, vanilla, I mean, like coach Meyer, when he first got to Florida, uh, the whole reverse psychology stuff he tried to play on us wasn't working at first. Like he, he had uh, resistance. Like I was, me and coach Meyer were about to fight one day um, because just the way he was talking to me, it didn't rub me the right way. Um, but eventually we end up having a better relationship, but you need some of those edgy guys. You're going to weed some of them, some of them out, but that character, uh, you need and Dan Mullen possessed the, the, the character to attain some of those guys. It didn't work out for him in, in enough time, but the type of coach he is, he's very relatable to the type of players, uh, that he brought in. And, uh, to be honest, you, it's a lot of high level talent that are, that are those type of guys. Uh, the light switch yeah. doesn't always come on right away. It may take some time, but I believe if Prince Lee stayed and got Coach Chapman, someone that's going to be able to explain to him why you're doing what you're doing and how it translates to on the field, then I believe uh, with Coach Chapman guiding him, he would, you know, he had a chance to be elite. I believe he possesses uh, everything in the bag to be an elite player. But as you go up, it's not high school anymore. It's why you're doing certain things. Um, and you have to play as a team. You just can't uh, be a solo show. And so when he was saying that the coach was kind of telling him just go and make a play because they view you as that high caliber of a player to say, hey, Prince, we need a play. Go do it. But do you view yourself like that yet? Mm. And a lot of that uh, just has come from being unsure and not knowing. You know what I mean? Um, and so I, I believe he'll be able to turn it on because when someone starts – uh not necessarily making an excuse but having an answer for everything that's a person that's unsure of themselves uh you possess all the talent God but it doesn't mean please. and it doesn't mean oh, that you're not going to therapy therapy it doesn't, yeah, it doesn't mean yeah. that you're not going to you don't have the potential and you're not going to tap into it um but princely people view you as that guy and it's time yeah. for you to do it but don't do it against the gator <laughs> it's probably it's probably best you, you you save that for this look i think I got, too i got one more thing one more thing oh my God. I, I agree with everything he said <laughs> but he should have used that attitude to lead the rest of that defense and not use the attitude on social media like like if you're mad make your defense play better for sure <laughs> yeah, I mean, lead, lead, like you said yeah. lead by kind of what you're saying it's like look go be that guy don't don't yeah. point the finger of how do I right. become that guy? You're supposed to be. You don't that have guy. to defend yourself. LeBron don't defend himself. <laughs> uh, any any great person is not defending themselves. Um, and playing ball, so, baby. Yeah. I think so. Kind of what we were talking about and talking about the, like just the the player personality. I call it ego, and I don't mean it in a negative way. I think we all have our ego. How we manage that is what changes. But Jimmy Smith, right, coached that Dallas Cowboy team. That team was full mm. of egos in the sense that it's all about me, <laughs> right? Yeah. That's a hard. That's a hard look. Not every coach can manage all those superstars and have success. The flip mm. side of that is I think of like Billy kind of fits. So Urban was at Jimmy Smith. I feel like Billy fits more into like a Bill Belichick, not as dry, but where there's no, there's no BS. There's no egos. I'm checking yeah, Tom Brady. Yeah. I'm checking the punter. You know what I'm saying? Like this, this right. that's the culture. I think that Billy is trying to uh, emulate more so than, and look, both are successful. We we've seen that. Yeah. I mean, in this day and age, you need that. You you need that uh, culture uh, right now. Uh, they're getting paid. You got NILs, kids getting money. Um, so you, you need that Bill Belichick approach. But I never I never heard any player ever say anything bad about Belichick. Like they didn't like him. Most players that I've ever talked to love the hell out the man. Um, and so what we see from him from the media, we we'll, we think that he's dry and this and that. But the people that played for him, all the players I know love and respect them and uh, talk about him in a different light. They don't share his stories just cause that's, uh, that's their bond with him. But most people say he's very approachable and a very, very, very likable guy. Everybody I know very uh, much love uh, Belichick. And I can see that for Billy being in the college atmosphere. Um, you need those guys to not be so loose because uh, anything can happen and the moment the players lose respect for you. Uh, you kind of lose the team. So let's let's talk about this. So this article with Justice Boone here. <clears throat> excuse me. Um, says, look, uh, 
Napier, just as Boone is one of my favorite players I've ever coached, Napier said that just like a few weeks ago. And we know that Boone got the number one jersey. Mm. Think about that, right? Boone got hurt before last season even started. Yeah. And now this guy's got the number one jersey. So think about how much of an impact he's made and what he's done in this locker room. Hasn't even played a snap. And still hasn't played. Still has the injury jersey on. Um, says New- Napier hasn't always felt that way. When he was hired at UF in 2021, Boone admits that he was making some poor decision in his life at that time. Napier <laughs> noticed it and called him out. He's been mentoring me. When we first got here, I wasn't always with the best crowd. I was still a little young, not necessarily doing everything yeah. I had to do. And he just kind of stepped on me a little bit. He told me that, hey, come on, I see a lot of you, and you could do better. And I appreciate Bingo. him for that. And so, yeah. Yeah, look, I think that he probably had this conversation with a lot of the guys and yeah. didn't didn't translate I, I, the same way. Yeah, no, I, I relate to that story. Um, yeah, I was, yeah. Uh, I was one of those hothead, uh, not necessarily hotheads. I just... I was no nonsense, um, but I like to hang out. I like the family atmosphere, and I'm always protect my brother. So I got a lot of fights uh, when I was at Florida, and you know, you just had to be real with me. But when Meyer got there, he weeded out a lot of players. A lot of us had some of the same uh, demeanors, but he weeded them out um, and only left a few. And those who stayed, uh, you know, we we changed, and it, it made us better. It made us better as. Uh, men uh teammates and uh just in our personal lives but um my story is well documented just Stephen harris gators google and you get all kind of articles but uh you you need those guys and but when once those guys click uh that's when your team starts to gel and you start leveling up and um it, just the justice bones from everything i've seen I, out of him uh, just his body language when he's on the field uh that means a lot um and just like uh in that one article you were, you were talking about body language and the players and um that means a lot man you could tell a lot about a player just by their energy when they're running around and how they're carrying themselves how they hold their head on the sidelines and stuff and um uh, justin boone i believe is going to have a great career i'm excited for that and real quick muddy says george uh gums transfer from N- niu which he was a tight end transferred Gump, yeah. to edge He's massive. This guy, this kid's yoked. Yeah. He said that Coach Peterson was hyping him up today. And again, this is an edge guy. This was a big time uh, pickup out of the portal. Again, not a flashy guy, uh, given the fact that he was playing tight end and made that that transition a little bit later on. But he's somebody who I was been excited to see just because of his sheer size and the pictures I've seen of him. He's he looks like a yeah a, a beast. <clears throat> uh, work ethic, man. Uh, we got some great coaches, man. Uh, Coach Chapman, man. Uh, we're gonna be singing his praises. Uh, I don't know who's gonna be the highest between him and Will Harris. Uh, did but, you see the clip I played uh, of Will today? The oh, for sure, yeah, 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 yeah. I got me hyped up. Uh, you know, we we go back for it, wish him good luck, man. He said, Hey, day by day, uh, that they're Break getting better. Uh, yeah, so, you, could you imagine like Shelton in one of those practices? He'd be like, Let's go, baby. Just give me an hour, baby. Just give me an hour, baby. I believe Shelton will hold his own. I don't know if he how fast he is, but he's gonna have a lot of energy. <laughs> Shelton look like one of those guys you can run over and he's gonna jump up and scream with you. Oh, let's go, baby. Let's go, buddy. Yeah. You better knock me out. You better knock me out. Got some blood coming in my mouth. All you gotta do is just watch a race Lorenzo Lingard. Yeah, that's true. I don't quit, baby. I'll be puking, but I don't quit. You know what I'm saying? I don't, I don't quit. Uh, real quick, we've got a, a we did a poll in the chat, and then I want to talk a little bit about the the massive uh, recruiting weekend that USC had. A little strange, a little strange. But we ran a little poll saying who do we think is going to back up Montreal Johnson this year? Because although we lost ET, and this running back room is still very thick, and sixty yeah. percent of you had three hundred votes, but there's not three hundred likes, which is very upsetting. <laughs> I don't understand hey. how that works, but. Whatever it is, what it is. Sixty um, percent said Trey on Web, which that seems to be the move. But we're hearing a lot of great things of these freshman running back, which is yeah. something that I said dime a dozen, and not in a negative yeah. way. It's just there's a lot of talent out there. Jane Ball getting a lot of heat, and we had boots on the ground uh, like uh, this past weekend. Cody went to the uh, basketball game, ran into Strickland. Mm-hmm. I don't know if Strickland knows that he was doing an interview for High Top Sports, but he was. And uh, he said he likes Jaden Ball. Likes Jaden Ball a lot. And Cam Carroll. What did he say about Cam Carroll, Dave? 
Yeah, he said Cam Carroll's injury wasn't at, or it was more severe than as reported, so he may miss mm. Week One. So we may mm. see Trey Webb or Kaden Daniels or Jaden Ball. Who knows? Yeah, I like and, I and, like Trey. And, and and look, like if you look at just the freshman guys, and of course Trey Webb, he was uh, he got a really he had a really bad injury in high school. I think he tore his ACL or something like that. So his re- recruiting ranking went down, but he was in the top 100 as a running back before it went down. Uh, and then you look at like Kanan Daniels, who has, has averaged almost 11 yards per carry and rushed for 5,000 yards in, in high school, which is phenomenal. And then you got Jaden Ball. I think he played one year, maybe a year and a half, and he averaged 14 yards per carry. And he came in weighing at 237 and doesn't look like he has an ounce of fat on him whatsoever. So, I mean, like, you know, Napier has shown that he's not afraid to throw a freshman running back out there. He's seen for what sure. he did with Trevor in his first year and look yeah. how ETN came out. I, I definitely think it's going to be uh, by committee. Um, I'm, I'm expecting uh, Johnson to get the bulk of the carries. Um, but uh, Trayon Webb, I believe, just going to be the solidified backup. Uh, as those guys get more familiar with the offense, uh, picking up uh, blitzes. And it didn't depend on the, the games. You know, we get down to some of those, I'm, I'm not going to say, uh, sorry schools, but games that we're expecting to win. We don't have, hey, we, I, don't have, we have one. So, yeah. <laughs> well, just by name and, and who we who we supposed to be, <laughs> for sure. Oh, but oh, uh, just some of, some of those lower schools, I expect to see some of those freshmen uh, get get some burn. See, um, it's one game, Steven. <laughs> we, we got like you make it seem like we got three of them. We get Stanford, like <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we, you know, yeah. There's not many, but, hey, but you no, know, we, we up by fifty. You know, against Miami, we throw those okay. guys in. Fair enough. Yeah, that's my bad. <laughs> we got a cupcake game one. What are you talking about? Yeah, right, that's my bad. Guys. Yeah, my bad. Yeah, we're going uh, undefeated this day anyway. So, look, the running back room. I'm excited about. I think we're going to see what we saw to last year, the Montreal with the ETN, and then we saw Webb kind of get some carries in there and have some major success with it. So, I think we'll see that similar package deal this year. His style. I think his style is uh diff- is unique. Uh, Webb's uh, running style. Um, yeah, he has the breakaway speed, but it's just it's just unique from the different backs. I like all of them. Uh, you, we know what Johnson is. Uh, we we're gonna get a chance to see these other guys, but just the way Webb runs is different, and I like to see him out of the backfield um, catching the ball too. I love yeah, that. Yeah, Webb's, Webb's more your like longer, speedier type of running back. Yeah, it's just different, man. It's just different. Yeah, so I think that switch up between him and Johnson on a consistent basis, but bringing those other guys in too um to give them uh, a blow but you never know when they're going to get the ball uh yeah. people are looking for sorely i texted sorely as well i said did you die because we haven't seen sorely in about a minute <laughs> oh uh, man nine, 19 yeah. months andrew apple says linky recovering on schedule awesome flying to florida on monday let's go baby. hey let's go linky i love there hearing that man love it, love, it, love, it, love it look hey andrew if you've been messaging message me on facebook i got a new facebook because i got i got banned so my new one is just <laughs> shelton phillip i had to like be incognito so i can't get you know what i mean the man trying yeah. to keep it down you, I gotta, you, you know. didn't even add me that's yeah i, mean, <laughs> I, I, I created it yesterday so can we oh, just, okay yeah, yeah, what yeah, yeah. he hit me with <laughs> like what <laughs> what did you get bad for a personal hey, let's keep our personal stuff offline okay steven <laughs> well, well you had been ghosting our little group chat for like four days i started to call you it's it's been look. Well, I had March Madness this weekend. All right, so I, that was priority number one. And then Sunday to Monday was was we were we were on baby duty. So I've been been in my I've been, yeah, I've been he, in my head. He finally showed his head. Dude. I was like, okay, he, he's alive. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. It's been it's been it's been a busy couple couple days. Um, yeah, Shelton gets kicked off of Facebook for uh, what Christian songs? Is that what it was? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Apparently so. Apparently so. Oh man. We got Chad Beaver in the chat. It's a hell of a show. Y'all are vibing. Thank you, thank you, Beaver. Chad. Come on, yeah, Beaver. Beaver. <laughs> Leave it to Beaver. Come on back, man. <laughs> um, so a couple things. Let's talk about the, the massive recruiting stuff. So we had Hilton Stubbs, who committed to USC, along with a few other recruits. Uh, One being a flip from Georgia, the other being uh, the edge rusher, who was heavily favored to go to Georgia, also committed to USC <laughs> within a matter of a time, you know, 24-hour span. Um, yeah. Very interesting. A lot of people are saying the Hilton thing isn't going to stick. It's not a good look shortly after the Keon Young uh, news drop. That was kind of unfortunate how that unfolded. There is some good news that we're hearing, some good vibes 
um, from recruiting. Again, with the wide receiver room, we talked about that a little bit. But the USC thing, they they yeah. didn't recruit well at all last year. They, <laughs> in my opinion, haven't shown any like a, a life at all. And I was heavy. I was high on USC. So this is not me taking a shot because I was big on Lincoln Riley. I was all in. <laughs> I had my 401k on this guy. And how they managed last year in Caleb Williams. Caleb Williams. Um, I don't know. I don't see how USC is selling anything unless they're just dropping dropping cheddar. And it was out of nowhere. I don't think those guys even visited USC. Like, out of nowhere. Yeah, now they must have saved their money from last year. That's true. <laughs> Put it all towards this year. Uh, most of those guys, you know, solidifying spots. Uh, but you got those new deals where you can talk contracts and stuff. Um, so you, you never know, man. Get those commits. Uh, turn some heads early. You never know what the deal they could be working. I was like advertising, like, "Hey, man, you're a top guy. Say you're coming here. I'll give you five thousand, but you don't really have to come. I just need to get this other guy." <laughs> like, you know, you never know what's going on. True. All those kids from the East Coast to remember that when you go over to California, those taxes are going to eat you That's alive. It. So you're Ooh, what you say you're getting, they're going to eat sure you alive. Not, I'm sure they're not selling that. They'll I'm be sure back. He never told them that part. They'll be back. <laughs> oh, uh, by the way, and the cost of living over there too. By the way, yeah, well, that's that's taken care of right now. But uh, and the water is not like South Beach. It's different. It looks like a good beach, but nobody gets in the water over there. Yeah, no, no, no. That, that beach is awful. <laughs> <laughs> like, if you if you look at their commitment list, there's like three guys from Georgia, a guy from Florida. Like none of those kids are gonna stick through that. Yeah, that's, <laughs> that's a far away away. Um, the last little bit is uh, Kugel, Riley Kugel on basketball. It's basketball talk, but it is, yeah. I mean, after, you know, I think a really a pretty good run in the season. Riley Kugel has entered into the portal. Honestly, no surprise there. We saw that one coming, given the way that his time on, on the court kind of fluttered out at the end there. He, he, he provided some spark when we needed him. Obviously, there's a lot of question marks on whether Walter will, 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 will be back. Tyree Samuel, I think there's some question marks on when he'll be back. We don't follow much base basketball. It was a blast to follow this year, so when we can't keep up with it, we obviously will. Um, but the Riley Kugel, well, that was pretty big news. So we'll see. The, the, the portal's been jumping. The big man from Colorado that tore, tore us up, uh, Eddie, yeah, yeah he <laughs> entered the portal too. So oh, there, man. Wow. There's, there's talks about him coming to Florida. Hey, Eddie, if you do, I said some <laughs> shit, all right? I, dis- yeah, I dis- disregard anything that I said, okay? We're always cool on this on this side yeah. here, okay? I was hot, bro. He was yeah. pissing me off, yeah. bro. Don't yeah. join the nation, baby. <laughs> join the nation. We'll love you when you get here. <laughs> man, man. Yeah. I'm excited, man. I can't wait to watch Bowling. I, I can't with you, Dave. Like the, you just we're going and then and this is what bowling. So <laughs> unfucking believable. You guys have anything else it. for us? Darts, whatever. <laughs> anything nah. else? Oh what? what was I getting asked a question? What was it? No, you're cut off, Dave. You got the mic. <laughs> All right. All right. I'll go, uh, I'll go look, yeah. before I let you guys all go, we got 400 strong. Be sure to smash the like button, subscribe. We got the like less, than a, less than a month. We are going to have our annual draft party at Best Bet. It's going to be absolutely huge. If you're close, if you're within spitting distance, come see us. We're doing giveaways while we're there at Best Bet off of 95 and uh, 207, 206. Just What's look at it. Up, Google it. 206. What city? What San city? Augustine, Florida. San Augustine, Florida. <laughs> Uh, come see us. It's going to be an absolute blast. We had a great time last year. They've got great food, booze. Trevor, stay at home. It's hey, last Dave, one. Last we one. got booze. Last, <laughs> last oh, one. Oh, hey, guess what? Guess what? I won't drive after I have those booze, by the way. Oh, my it's God. Not I mean, Uber. Wasn't, that wasn't the last one. That wasn't the last one. <laughs> so, we'll, so, look, it's going to be a great time. Uh, again, it's on a Thursday night, I know, but it's draft day. We've obviously got some Gators that could, you know, and not possibly first round, but definitely second round. And then, of course, April 13th, I'm working on something. I know Johnny Townsend's doing a massive event. I put out, put all my eggs into a basket trying to – we were there last year trying to see if I can get to that tent again um, and help because they're, they're selling tickets for like 75 bucks, and it's mm. worth it. And so if we can get involved Ooh. with that, I w- we're going to pump it and push it. I mean, I'll push it regardless because it's an incredible event. Steven, I think – Steven, you should reach out. Maybe we we, we I could yeah. I'm trying to say, look, yeah, I got some people. In, yeah, you, did you yeah. play on? The, you played for the team. You're familiar with the, the team, right? Was it the, the Florida Gators? You're, you're, <laughs> you're close, right? Yeah, yeah. Now we'll we'll make something work. I'm gonna pull some strings, man. Yeah, because he likes to have um, former players come and be a part of yeah, that yeah. group. 
So yeah, it's, Steven, it, it's a lot of guys in that area. So we'll, if there's we'll anything that you you know, if I've ever asked for anything, yeah, yeah just, just, just send me the, send me the contact who I need to contact. I don't know. <laughs> That's, I have I have Johnny's number, but he's impossible yeah. to respond. So I went to who got me in last year, Judd, and said, "Hey, can we make this thing work? Because if we can go and promote that, look, it's seventy five bucks. You get to meet past Gators." Uh, oh, we gonna, yeah, we're going to jump it. Yeah, we're going to get that thing lit. I got yeah, there's, you. There's food, there's booze. Like, it is an incredible event. It all donates to the Johnny Townsend Foundation. And honestly, I just want to get his brother back on, Tommy Townsend, so I can be one yeah. step closer to Taylor Swift. That's, that's literally the entire <laughs> with all of this. They, uh, are they um, they're sponsoring the event? Who's? Or just, just proceeds are going to Townsend? It's Johnny's, it's Johnny Townsend's event. Oh, yeah, don't worry. I got you. Oh yeah, yeah. See, like, all you gotta do is just say, "Hey, look, we got, we got it." They amped up Shelton, and, and I'm just gonna report the news there anyway. Well, so they, 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 was they just allowed, did. David's not allowed to go. He's in timeout. They just did the event here in Tampa, a uh, kicking event. Oh, okay. Were you? Did you were there? Yeah. No, I, I didn't go, but I got invited. Um, with through Alley. Uh, you no, know, Eric's a partner. Oh yeah, yeah, that's oh. right, that's right, that's right. Okay, we'll do some yeah. magic, Stephen. Let's lock yeah, it in that's, here. Yeah. Because I would love to, yeah, get the spirit fingers working. I would love to be able to have a spot because it's in, it's it's in the tent. It's yeah, we'll, we'll promote it and all that stuff. So I'll, I'll make some calls. And if we can get a, a spot, and I know, hey, we're a lot guaranteed. I will pump the shit out of it. I, I was like, bro, there's no way. Like, we got people who go to that game. Like, we'll sell the shit out of those tickets. It's a, it's, What's the it's date an incredible event. Again? Major Wright was the there exact? last year, uh, April 13th. What's the exact date? April 13th. Yeah, spring game. Oh, so yeah, they're, we, they're in the spring game. Uh, I know the yeah, Pouncey brothers were there. Pouncey twins we were there. Major Wright was there. Um, there's a few other guys. I know that obviously the town, both towns and brothers were there and a few others. I didn't get to see everybody. I know Clifford was there. There was, there, there was, there was, what was crazy is there was a Gator. <laughs> he was a former Gator. There was a punter for one of the teams. He may be listening to the show now. I don't remember his name, but he, I remember I was on the outside and he's like, he was on the inside. He's like, bro, I love your show. Past player. Like he was, he was more excited to meet me. And then I, I didn't oh, even yeah. know who he was. So oh, was, you need you need you need passes and all. All right, so we got to get you exclusive. Exclusive. Well, yeah, Judge Jud, last year, Judge just walked up and said, "Hey, Don, uh, Johnny, he's gonna go ahead and uh, set up set up shop." So if we needed to, <laughs> we could do that again. But I was like, Judge, let's just let's do it right. Let's promote. Yeah, do it stuff. right. Yeah, get yeah. The let's promote going. it. Yeah. Give me. And we did the sport. other event. Yeah, like, like the, I was uh, like, dude, we could yeah. sell more tickets than Johnny just tweeting it. Like I know we could. Yeah. So. Let's work. All let's right. work. Let's, yeah, let's, let's get work. going. We'll so two events. Yeah, mark your calendars. Thirteenth, twenty six. Y'all better go to at least, if you can't go to both, which you should. Make 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 one of them. Make one of them happen, and uh, come hang out with us. They're gonna be a blast. To John both. Wilcox, you're going. Both. So I better see your ass wherever. I've got a whole weed. directional pad for them. They go down Museum Road. They stop by Harmonic Woods. Then they go on their way up there to get. There you go. Yeah. There you go. I'm trying to read the chat. They've got a map out for you. <laughs> Aaron oh, yeah. says, I'm a broke bitch. Hey, You've got three weeks to save, Aaron. Three weeks to save. <laughs> Wherever there's drinks in there. Also, so. too, they're doing a meet and greet after the game through Florida Victorious. I tweeted out the link, how you can sign up. Go do that, too. And can we announce it, Dave? Who's on the show next week? We should be able to announce it, right? Uh, I'm asking is it Dave, like Dave's in charge here. Huh? Is it, is it, <laughs> yeah, she said, she, she said next week. Okay, yeah, yeah, whoa, go whoa, ahead. Well, well, hold on. To be fair, she said, let me check if it'll work with him. We'll just say it. We'll figure it out. But Big Rod's coming on the show. Rod, Roger Kearney is coming on the show. We're not exactly Big sure Rod. on the time of the date, but <laughs> he will yeah. be on the show soon. So shout out to Florida Victorious, as always, for showing us some love. Hey, donate, man. Donate, donate, donate to the cause, man. And use yeah. code High Top. Yep. Promo code High Top. Save 20% on your percent I love it. Steve, get us, get us locked into that tent. Boys and girls, we're four and strong yes, all night long. I love you as always. Smash the like button. Subscribe. Follow us on Twitter. Check us out on Instagram. Follow the website for when Dave's dropping us hot uh, articles. And until next time, I'm Sheldon. That's Steve. That's the Dave Meister. I just reported the news. <laughs> Peace and love, baby. <laughs>